everyone, it's Sandra, and it's time to share some of my current favorite beauty products. I haven't done a standard monthly favorites video over the last couple months, but now I definitely feel like I have a good set of products to share with you. Some of them are more glamorous than others, and I guess we'll start with the least glamorous thing. This is not exactly a beauty product for your face and body, but this is a product that will make your clothing more beautiful, and it's a sweater shaver. I got this from Amazon. I actually bought this a couple years ago, but it's that time of year to get all your knitwear out and ready for the upcoming fall and winter season. And this stuff is awesome. If you have any pilling or any little fuzzy bits that are hanging out of a well-worn sweater, this will kind of just smooth everything out. There are also sweater combs and sweater stones that you can use depending on how delicate your knitwear is. I just use this guy on everything that I have and I have not had any tragic events with it. Knock on wood. <laughs> the next product is a skincare product and I actually have a giant zit on my cheek. I like to use my hair to cover it up whenever I have like a cystic bump that can't really be covered with concealer. Hair can sometimes be the best concealer. I ordered this when it first came out and I've really been enjoying it. It's the Paula's Choice 10% Azelaic Acid Booster. It also contains licorice extract and salicylic acid. Especially since I have quite acne prone skin, it is an ingredient that really intrigued me. It's an acid derived from grains like wheat and barley, and it's not as intense as glycolic acid, for example. It is more gentle and it exfoliates the skin in a different way than traditional AHAs and BHAs. I'm going to link to an article where you can read up more about the um, ingredient, but it's actually very good for all skin types. And I find that whenever my skin is feeling a little bit congested, I apply this I apply this at night and I alternate this with my Differin. So one night I will use Differin, one night I will use this. Sometimes if I have a uh, monster like Mount Vesuvius over here, I actually mix it in with my serum in the morning as well. That's the beauty of the Polish Choice Booster range. They play really well by themselves or you can mix them with serums and moisturizers that you already own if you want to kind of boost that formula and just kind of get the best of both worlds. So. This is lovely, it has worked really well for me, and I highly recommend it if you're struggling with congestion, but your skin is a little bit on the sensitive side, or maybe you've just been overdoing it with acids and you want to kind of take a step back and just ease into things a little bit, this is a worthy product to try. The next product I want to talk about is a lipstick, and I am doing a little challenge for the month of October, and I'm trying to wear every single red lipstick that I own at least once in the month. It will kind of help me narrow down my red lipstick collection because I don't wear red lipstick that often, but I sure seem to collect it. Today's red lipstick is YSL Rouge Pure Couture number one, if you're wondering, but I'm not talking about red lipsticks in this video. I'm going to do like a follow-up I'm not sure if it's going to be a video or blog post by the end of uh, my little challenge, so stay tuned for that. But I also don't wear red lipstick for occasions where it's just not practical. If I'm going out to dinner, I'm not going to wear a red lip most of the time because it's going to end up on my chin and my teeth and it's going to look like a crime scene. So. I do still wear my nude lipsticks when appropriate. And this is the nude lipstick that I have been loving for the last month and a half. And it's by Urban Decay. It's the Urban Decay Vice Lipstick in the shade Fuel. It's just a gorgeous peachy nude. It just gives such a beautiful warmth and definition to the lips. I have been loving this. And I will insert a clip right now of me wearing it. Sometimes I wear it with a lip liner. I really like it with the Bare Minerals Borderline lip liner. Sometimes I add a little bit of lip gloss on top if I want to spruce things up a little bit, but this has just been my go-to nude lately, and I love it. I think it's great for fall as well because it does have that warm undertone to it. The formula is lovely, lovely satin finish, wears beautifully. It doesn't ever make my lips feel uncomfortable or dry, and it also doesn't smell which is always a plus. <laughs> I definitely appreciate it when a lipstick is unscented. I like the YSL lipstick scent, for example, but I also know that it, not everybody likes it. And I just find that a truly scent-free lipstick is a crowd pleaser. There's nothing worse than coming across a lipstick whose formula and application and color you absolutely love, but the scent is just overwhelmingly 
bad. It just kind of just kind of ruins the magic for me. The next beauty product that I have been loving is uh, an eyebrow gel from ColourPop. And these just recently launched, I believe. I know they had the clear one for quite a while, but they recently launched tinted ones. And this was actually my first ColourPop order, I think. Ever since L'Oreal discontinued my favorite brow gel, the Brow Stylist Plumper, I've kind of been on the hunt for my next go-to brow gel. And this is the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel. The packaging looks almost, almost identical to Glossier, except the Glossier has the branding on the white side and the silver lid. This one's kind of like the opposite. It has the branding on the silver side, but this is an identical dupe for Glossier Boy Brow. In terms of color, I really liked the blonde color in the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Plumper because I feel like it actually changed the color of my brows. It actually made my brows look lighter. This does not do that. I got the shade light brown and I got the shade blonde. Neither of those shades actually tint my brow hairs the same way that the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Plumper did. But in terms of formula and the way that it applies, these were identical to the Glossier blonde boy brow gel that I had. I also use the Glossier boy brow in brown when I want a darker, more defined brow. So I think uh, the next ColourPop order I'll be placing, I'm gonna be trying the brown color. But so far, the light brown and the blonde colors in the ColourPop brow gel are very, very, very similar to the lighter color of the Glossier Boy Brow that I've tried. I hope this makes sense. If you are a Glossier Boy Brow fan, definitely check this out. This is like half the price. It was $6. They have a beautiful taupey color to them. They're not too warm at all. They will not make your eyebrows look um, too warm, which is great. I like a neutral slash cool toned brow color. I find that more flattering. It's not a replacement for my L'Oreal because it doesn't actually make my brows lighter, but it's a replacement for my Glossier Boy Brow, so still a win. The next thing that deserves a mention is the New Lash Lash Enhancing Serum. I've been using this for the last two years and I can't be without it. I wanted to mention that if you do want to try this, it's on sale at Dermstore. Dermstore has like a friends and family sale. That's usually where I buy this. And they currently have 20% off. I think if you use the code friends on their website. So if you ever wanted to try this, now is the time because it's 20% off. And I absolutely love this. I'm going to be ordering another one. I can't be without this actually. My eyelashes are just so, so much better with this in my life. And I go through one tube a year. It is a quite pricey product, but it does last a whole year. When you first use it, you're supposed to use it every single day until you get desired results. Then after that, you can alternate days in order to maintain results. It makes mascara go on beautifully. It hasn't given me any sensitivity or any lid discoloration or any issues. I absolutely love this. The next product is a hairbrush. I've had this for two years now as well, and I also bought it from Derm Store when Derm Store had a friends and family sale because this is a Mason Pearson hairbrush. These hairbrushes are notoriously expensive, so if you've ever wanted one in your life, now is the time to get one. Mine has been very, very well loved. This is just such a good hairbrush, and I have not been able to find anything that compares. I don't really know why this is so good it kind of pains me to say that because it actually it, it took a while for me to talk myself into buying it because it is so expensive and to spend so much money on a hairbrush is absolutely insane but now that i've owned it for the last two years i can honestly say that it is worth it for me and that i do recommend it so if you've ever been curious about these brushes i think they're lovely the one thing that they do really really well is distribute oils from your roots to your tips they have a mix of uh, natural and synthetic bristles depending on your hair type the one that i have is 100 percent natural they have a little tool that helps you determine which brush is the best for your hair type because different hair types have different needs i have very fine thin hair and i love 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 this it just does such a great job at smoothing things out. I don't use this to detangle my hair. I don't use this to heat style my hair. I just use this every morning, every evening to smooth my hair out. It kind of evens out my oiliness. It distributes the oils from the roots through the rest of your hair and it kind of helps improve your hair's condition over time using your own natural oils. It also does an amazing job if you curl your hair and you want to break up the curls and you just want it to look 
more wavy rather than curly. It does such a beautiful job at kind of unraveling the curls and just giving your hair a very soft wave instead. It just, it does the trick like no other. The next product is a setting powder. It's a pressed powder that can also work as foundation. It's a mineral powder and it's by Pure. This is their 4-in-1 pressed mineral makeup and it's a wonderful powder for setting your face without having it look too powdery. It just beautifully sets my makeup. It adds a little bit of coverage. I like to use it with just a small brush just targeted on my T-zone and I love the fact that it gives me a little bit of coverage, especially if I have blemishes or anything to cover up, um, but it never looks dry. It's not an oil control powder, but it does do a really nice job at just setting my makeup and especially during fall and winter, I don't need as much oil control as I do in the summer. So I've been using this a lot and I even used it by itself as a foundation and I really liked the way that it looks. I'm going to be doing that more when I have a good skin day because I loved the effect. It didn't look too heavy at all. It just gave me such a beautiful natural looking finish. I just used a kabuki brush and used this all over my face and I was super, super impressed. I hadn't used a powder foundation, the traditional powder foundation way in such a long time. I was really into MAC Studio Fix powder for a few years. That was my go-to. And when I wore this, I wore this to work and it lasted beautifully throughout the day. I didn't get too oily. I didn't, it didn't get cakey or patchy or it didn't give me dry patches at all. I was super, super impressed. I'm going to be using it by itself a lot more now that I know that it works. And um, on an everyday basis, I love using this to just set my T-zone. Another setting product that I love is this <laughs> Clarence spray that is uh, on, its last, on its last leg. I definitely need to buy a backup. This is the Clarence Fix Makeup Spray. I've been talking about this for, oh my God, last five years, I think. This is one of my favorite makeup setting sprays. I go between this and the Urban Decay All Nighter depending on my skin's needs. The Urban Decay All Nighter has um, alcohol in it and it also has a lot more like silicones and products that are meant to adhere pigment to your skin. This is more of like a makeup refresher. So I can use this just to refresh my makeup. I can use this if my skin is feeling dry. I can use this if my skin is feeling sensitive. Whereas the Urban Decay All Nighter, I can only really use that when my skin is having a really oily moment because if my skin is dehydrated and I use the Urban Decay All Nighter, I find that it kind of dries my face out. This is a great product to have on hand in the fall and winter to kind of refresh the makeup at the end of the day. Sometimes if I come home and uh, I don't have time to like redo my makeup and I have to be out of the house if I'm like meeting a friend for dinner or something like that, I can just do a little spritz of this to refresh my makeup. And then I kind of dab with my beauty blender, my oils, from the day mixed in with this. It just kind of refreshes my makeup really, really quickly. It has a beautiful rose scent. This definitely smells better than the Urban Decay All Nighter. I feel like they've changed the scent of Urban Decay All Nighter because the bottle that I have now smells like pure chemicals. So I don't know if the one that I have is bad, but it does not smell good. This is um, very gentle. It smells like a very gentle rose and it's a very delicate mist as well. It's like perfume. It's just, it's a beautiful spray. I will definitely be buying it again. I uh, always buy this from Shopper Drug Mart. I collect my optimum points and I love to redeem them for this. The last two products I wanted to talk about are eyeshadow palettes and this is an old rediscovered palette. This is the Urban Decay Naked Basics. I hadn't touched this in a long, long time, but when I did my revisiting Sephora orders video, this kind of came back to mind and I love this. It's such a good, easy, everyday product. And especially this month, I'm wearing a lot more red lipsticks than normal, so I don't like to go too crazy with my eyes. I like to have a nice matte brown neutral eye with a red lip. I like that combination a lot. So this palette has been perfect for that. I very rarely use this black color. I don't usually wear black eyeshadow at all, but it's nice that it's in there. It works well as an eyeliner, but yeah, this has been such a lovely little rediscovery and it also pairs beautifully with the more shimmery single shadows in my collection. I can just use this for my base and then just dip my finger into like a creamy, shimmery shadow and do a little 
spotlight eye look. So I'm excited to uh, have rediscovered this. And maybe if you have this lying around and you haven't picked it up in a long time, maybe this will encourage you to show it some love this month. And then finally, the last thing is this brick. This is my very first foray into the Pat McGrath beauty brand. It's the Pat McGrath Mothership 5 eyeshadow palette. This is obscenely expensive. This was definitely the most that I've spent on uh, just a single eyeshadow purchase ever. But when I saw this, it just got me so excited about eyeshadow and I hadn't felt that feeling of pure excitement probably since like back in the day when we were all freaking out over the last, like the latest MAC collection. Like remember how we all felt when MAC released the Hello Kitty collection. I absolutely love this. I think it's beautiful. Do I think you need to run out and get it? Absolutely not. I never bought the Hourglass glittery shower sh shadow toppers. I never bought the Stila glitters. So for me, that was kind of justified because the glitters in this palette are what kind of made it for me. They have these three beautiful duochrome glitter top coats. And then there are these two colors that also have glitters in them. There are three gorgeous matte shades and two beautifully pigmented shimmery shades in the palette. And I did a couple of more glamorous glittery looks with this when I first got it and I absolutely love it. It's going to be so beautiful for holiday looks. I also did a couple of really, really wearable workday looks. Like I'm wearing the palette today, but you wouldn't really know it because uh, you can get really subtle daytime appropriate looks with this as well. The actual quality of the matte shadows, of the shimmery shadows, it's on par with like my Tom Ford eyeshadows. And the Tom Ford eyeshadow quads are now like $88 and those are four eyeshadows. At least with this one, 125 US dollars, but you get 10 colors. So price per shadow is cheaper than Tom Ford. That's what I tell myself. But in terms of packaging, this is beautiful. It's very, very heavy. I love the details of it. It has this beautiful gold backing and it's like actually engraved. It's not just a sticker. I'm very, very happy to have this in my life. Her lip liners also look really interesting. So I might be diving into those next. Very happy with this. Do not regret my purchase. And if you are on the fence, and you're wondering what I had to say about this, I really like this. I'm also maybe toying with the idea of doing like, of wearing this every single day throughout the week and just kind of documenting the process. And I might be doing one of those videos maybe next month after my red lipstick challenge is over. And that concludes today's video. I hope that you enjoy this. Please let me know what your favorite products have been in the comment section below. I am always excited to hear about your favorites and uh, I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye.